our next performer started performing magic at the age of six. Uh, he has now gone on to win over 12 magic competitions and create and design his own original magic. And is even under contract with one of the biggest magic producers to produce his own magic. For the second time here at the Boston Magic Lab, give a warm welcome to Andrew Niner. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is indeed true. I am Andrew Niner. Tris, thank you so much for that awesome introduction. Yes, I am here to do some magic for you tonight, right now here at the Boston Magic Lab. So without further ado, I will show you some magic for your entertainment pleasure. Let me make sure my camera is in focus. Perfect. Alrighty. So, as most of you know, I am a magician. I mean, after all, I am performing here at the Boston Magic Lab. Uh, but I do card stuff. And uh, a lot of people always tell me after I perform, oh, it's all just smoke and mirrors. And I always found that, that, uh, that phrase interesting and intriguing because how in the world can there be smoke and mirrors with a deck of playing cards? It doesn't really make any logical sense. However, tonight, right now, here in front of everyone, I'm going to share exactly how a deck of cards is like smoke and mirrors. I'll actually let you in on a little secret. A deck of cards has mirrors of its own. Let me show you here. We'll deal out three and we'll do three from the bottom, just like that perfect all right we'll use the uh the top card here as the uh, what is it the king of diamonds so keep your eye here on the king of diamonds and all of those cards as well watch what happens here you just give the king away see a mirror so the smoke part not so much mirror part definitely uh but here's the crazy thing with these mirrors all we got to do is give it a rub on the card and just tap and that's when that turns to a mirror as well works with this one too look put it down just to tap and that is also a mirror now. Okay, little crazy. Look, we'll take this one, put it in the center here. All we do is push it through just like that. Give it another snap. Swipe it, and bam, that's also a mirror. All right, I'm going strong. I'm going to keep going. Uh, we'll use these two cards here as well. I'll uh, we'll put this one in between just like that. You can see that hopefully. Yep. All right. Watch closely because the moment you blink, this will happen. And I guarantee you'll miss it, so don't blink. All we do is we cover it for just a second. And that's when that also becomes a mirror. Two more mirrors. Ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly how there are mirrors in a deck of playing cards. Okay, okay. Maybe I went a little over the top there. <laughs> a little excessive. Uh, but honestly, uh, if you think about it, right, this is what I do. This is kind of how stuff works. Uh, uh, mirrors, that's just one aspect of magic. And that's one aspect of how people think magic is done. It's funny, a lot of times people will make up their own solutions for magic rather than just accept we're just doing sleight of hand or that's how the trick works. So if you don't accept the fact that I just did sleight of hand and you want a bigger and greater explanation, I, I guess I can go further and say uh, if you're not careful with playing cards, specifically mere playing cards when you're working, sometimes, uh, oh, yeah, if you hit them too hard, they actually uh, they can shatter and that's not good. No, nobody wants that. That would give me uh, seven years of bad. Oh, sorry, that's 42 years of bad luck right there. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. When I was really, really little, um, mirrors were like magic, right? Really little before I even knew what smoke and mirrors, that term went or what magic was. S mirrors were like magic to me. But let me explain. Um, I actually have, yeah, I, I brought a mirror with me here today. Mirrors are so cool. And let me explain this to you from like the point of view of like a six-year-old. Make sure that ends up perfect. Okay, for instance, uh, if we take an object like a crayon, okay? Uh, if we take an object as simple as a crayon and we place it in front of the mirror, what's going to happen? Well, you know what's going to happen. But to a six-year-old or even younger, all of a sudden, the object I only had one of, there are now are two of them. So think of how cool this was. I go up to a mirror with a candy bar. There's a candy bar. And I go to grab it. Of course, you can't. That's common sense. It's just a reflection. But I then read when I was a little bit older that vampires and ghosts would, uh, would take their... Uh, the, the, they couldn't see a reflection of themselves in the mirror. And I was like, no way. I have to try this. Of course, I was at the age where uh, fairy tales were life. <laughs> so I went up to my mirror. I covered it with my hands. And... Well, I'll tell you, I, I was quite sad to reveal and realize that nothing happened and my reflection was still there. <laughs> However, uh, when I grew even older and I discovered magic, 
I started taking these things and, and turning them into a bit more of a, well, a greater understanding, more of a trick, I guess you could say. For instance, um, if I take this crayon and move it just out of view so you can't see it, right? There we go. I think that might have been the first magic trick I ever learned, or made up, I guess. If it doesn't make sense to you, let me again explain it to you from the six-year-old I was. There is a mirror, and what do mirrors do? They reflect. There is an object in front of the mirror, but the object is not being reflected. Of course, I had no understanding of physics at that age, and I thought one plus one equaled chicken. <laughs> so, of course, this made perfectly logic sense to me. Uh, but of course, what I didn't count in is from any other angle besides dead on, uh, this trick really didn't work. You could see you could see the the crayon in the mirror. So it wasn't until later that I, I kind of came up with my own uh, how, how should we put this my own little uh, magic trick. This was much farther up the line, much closer when I was doing card tricks. And um, well, let me explain it to you right now. You see, after I did discover magic and I started turning my my little fairy tale dreams or whatever you want to call them into into a reality. Um, I started doing some really crazy stuff. I know, it's a bit weird. Crayon is there. Box is there. But the reflection is also... Hey, I hope Lynn is enjoying the Red Sox. But uh, it's funny, when I became a little more better at magic, I also got better at misdirection and, and kind of, um, well, making stuff confusing for people. <laughs> and then people started not even understanding my train of thought to not even understanding what I was doing. I, I mean, what, what good is a reflection if um, you can't have that second item? You see, using mirrors from when I didn't even know what magic was until now, I've learned one very, very important rule. And that rule, it's very simple, but important. And that rule is whenever using mirrors, you should always know when to use mirrors and when not to. Ah, 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 very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed my little performance here at the Boston Magic Lab. Please, if you liked it, go ahead and spam those ones in the comments. I love to see them. Oh, yes, and if you would like to also, go ahead and follow the Boston Magic Lab on Facebook and Instagram and all of the different social media platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Andrew Nanner. I hope you have enjoyed my performance. Now, unfortunately, this experiment has come to a close, but... Rest assured, there are many. Many more in the future. <laughs> Hi, that was so cool. I've got I've got some experimental questions for you. Uh I'll keep them coming. Have, have you looked into yeah. Have you looked into gravitation at all? Um, a, a little bit. Um, Tris, are you okay? Uh, it's, you know, the, 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 they'll turn it back on eventually. We'll, we'll see. Okay, just, just checking. Anyway, uh, that was super cool. I don't think I'm ever going to look at mirrors the same way again. I Well, I never did as a child, and then when I grew up, it just got worse. So. Oh, I mean, like, I didn't understand it as a kid, and it was, like, confusing, and then it stopped being confusing. Now it's confusing again. Oh, well, that's my job, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it was freaking awesome, and, and thanks. Well, thank you, yeah. I, it's still something I don't quite understand. Maybe we'll figure it out. Someday.